If you've been into electronics or Arduino for even a short while, you're probably familiar with the electronics breadboard. These things are great when you are tinkering with a design as it develops. But the question is, what do you do with that project once you're finished? Do you leave it in the breadboard where bits can get lost? Or if you want to do a future project, you have to tear it all out and you lose it? Or do you turn it into something a bit more permanent like this? Jumping straight into it, I'm gonna show you how you can create that PCB of an alarm clock that you just saw from a breadboard which you may have just prototyped. So there's a few steps involved. The first one, we're gonna jump straight into KiCad. So the first step is creating a schematic and we use this little icon here to jump into that. Making a schematic should be pretty easy because you've already done that on your breadboard. You're now just putting it in digital form on the computer. All of these components here are essentially the things I've plugged into my Arduino Nano. So we've recreated it here in the schematic. So I've got each of my buttons here running to one of the digital pins on the Arduino. And essentially when we press those, it pulls it to ground. That's how our buttons work and you've probably used them before. We've got a Fermista here, which allows our alarm clock to tell us the temperature. Uh, a buzzer, so it creates a really annoying sound to wake you up. And then I wasn't too sure how I wanted the power to work when I first made this circuit board. So what I did is I gave myself three options and then I could choose between them when I came to do the layout later on. So I whacked in a USB-C plug, which is what I used on this one here. And I also gave the option of using a barrel jack, you know, your standard sort of cylinder plug, because that's easier to solder if you can't do SMD components or surface mount components at home. The next main component is the display. These are the classic digital alarm clock style screens. But essentially, if you go online and find the data sheet for your display, I'm just using one that came in an Arduino kit, it will tell you what each pin correlates to and then from there you can work out which to plug into which pin. These final bits in the blue boxes are already existing circuit boards. So this is a clock I see and it enables the Arduino to know the time. And if you unplug whatever it is you're using because of the battery, it will keep that time. So I could have used this directly and soldered it to my circuit board, but I've just taken the time to integrate it so I don't have extra boards plugging in and it just looks that little bit cleaner. I've done the exact same for the Arduino. We could have just taken an Arduino Nano and integrated that into our board, but actually it's quite easy to just take the Arduino chip. You can find the schematics online because they are open source and free. You've got the Arduino at Mega Chip itself. You've got a 16 megahertz crystal. You've got your power coming in, some smoothing capacitors, and then we've got our reset pin pulled high so it doesn't constantly reset. Other than that, it's pretty simple. You've got your digital input output pins, so D0 all the way up to D13. Your analog ones here, and then the reset pin. I've used what are called global labels. So if I put, say, D9 here, I can then use that same label over here, and these are now connected, and I just don't have to put like a messy wire connecting the two. So if I wanted to place another component, I would go to place symbol over here on the right, click anywhere that's blank on the schematic. If I was gonna add another resistor, I just start to type in resistor. And then it will bring up all of the ones in the KiCad library. I scroll down to just basic R resistor, hit okay, and now drop that in. If I hover over it and hit E for edit, if I wanted it to be a 100 ohm resistor, type it 100 so I know that's what it is. I can assign the footprint. So this is the actual footprint your component's gonna have in the layout. So click on the symbol here, brings up the KiCad library, scroll down until I find resistors. And there's a ton to choose from, which can look a bit confusing, but essentially we've got these standard through hole resistors here. 
if we find diameter 3.2, length 9 mil, and then the pitch, which is the distance between the pins, 12.7 mil, that's fine. You can fold them however you want them. And then we can assign that. So you'll see there's a question mark next to where it says R. That's because it hasn't assigned a number to our resistor. If I go to annotate schematic symbols, I can annotate the entire schematic, but I want to keep what I've already got so I don't overwrite them all. Hit annotate and we can now see it's annotated that resistor as R10. Now the final stage before you move on to your layout is to go into edit symbol fields. And this essentially shows us all of those components that we've placed. And then if we want to, we can add a link to a data sheet of that component. We can give a brief description so we know what it is. And then I've added my own field for LCSC, which is a company in China that supply components. And I've included the part number so I can find them to buy easier in the future. So we can see that R10 we've just placed. If you hadn't assigned the footprint, you can now do it here as well. So there it is, apply and save. And now I've edited all of those symbol fields, I can generate a net list, which is gonna be the list of all of the components we're gonna include. It's gonna be called whatever.net. So I've already done that, but you would hit save. And that's all there is to the schematic stage. I know I've gone through that quite quickly, I'm just trying to give you a bird's eye view of the whole process to get to the PCB stage and that way you can find more detailed tutorials on each section and then move through until you get your finished product. So that's it for schematic, you would save obviously and then move on to the next stage which is PCB layout editor. So the first thing you would do is load in the netlist we just made, go ahead and navigate to that and then we would update the PCB. That brings in all of those components, these white lines, which is called a rat's nest, showing us which pin needs to connect where. So we can toggle that on and off just to make it a bit more clear for us. So at this point, you could start laying out the components. What I like to do is put in the dimensions I'm working towards. That way it doesn't end up being too big or a weird shape that I didn't want. So I can lay out using the dimension tool, 100 mil, to three centimeters tool. And now I know to start laying out my components within this space I've set for myself. So if I click on a component, it highlights it. If I hit M, I can move it and I can rotate it using R. So I can place a display where I want it. And it's quite useful to keep the rat's nest on because then you can get a general idea of what's connecting where and that way you can optimize your layout. So for example, this IC for the display needs to kind of sit in between the Arduino and the display. And if I rotate it, now it's a bit cleaner. So I can drop that in there. So I know in this PCB, I want all of the components that we're gonna solder going through the front. This is a two-sided PCB. That way I can push them through and we can solder on the back. For the surface mount components, I've actually placed these on the back. So what I wanna to do to ensure it's like that in the CAD, if I go to the battery holder here and I hit E, I can go to board side and I can set that to the back. It mirrors itself round. It's now highlighted in purple instead of blue. So I know that's on the back. The pads as well will also turn green. Once you've gone and placed all of your components, you can start to run traces between them. So you just click on the trace tool, you can assign the thickness up here at the top left. And then these indicate which layer I'm working on. So if I want to do a trace on the front, I select that. As Soon as I click on a pad, it will dim everything else and highlight where I need to go to, which makes it very easy. So I would just run that trace now to here. And then if I want to run a trace on the back, I can do the same, I hit back, I run the trace, it highlights it for me, and I would go and place that. One thing that wasn't immediately apparent to me when I first started making PCBs is through-hole components are connected within the PCB itself. Where we see a pad on top, there is a piece of copper running through the PCB to connect it to the pad on the bottom. Even if I solder the component on the back, but I place my trace on the top, they are actually connected. It is considered general knowledge, but for me anyway, it wasn't very obvious. 
On the schematic, as I showed you, I had a couple of different options for how I could do the power. So I had the USB-C, I had the barrel jack. Well, on this example, I don't want to use it, so I can just hit delete and that's fine. The others are still there and I can connect those up. If I want to bring it back, I can reload the netlist and it will bring it back in. So you don't need to worry about that. So I've got the finished PCB up here. You've got a type C connector in this instance down on the bottom right. At this point, I could do a file save as and save the same board somewhere else, but call it barrel jack. And then I could only change that one individual aspect so you can have multiple versions. And that's also really useful if you're about to make a huge change to your PCB, but you don't want to lose what you've already done just in case you have to go back to it. Do a save as, call it version 1.1 or something, and then work on that instead so you don't lose any previous work. So this is quite a simple PCB. I've placed the components, I've got the red traces up on top, the green ones on the bottom. I've placed myself a logo. There is a logo loader you can use built into KiCad, so you can place your own logos. And if you've used the KiCad library, then if you go to View and 3D Viewer, it already has all of the 3D models for those components, which is great because now we can see exactly how our board is going to look. So that's it there with our battery connector and everything on the back. I've also added here some screw holes so we can make the foot stand that you see with the screw here. Once you get to that stage is all you have to do is create your Gerber files and this is the file that the manufacturer will read to produce your board. So to do that we go to file and then plot and we can choose where we want to output these files. So I'm going to put it on the desktop here. Do you want to use a path? Yes, why not? And then these are the layers you want to include. So you've got your front and back layers, the silk screen, that's where your text appears, and then the edge cuts, which is the perimeter. Hit plot. Then you want to go to generate drill files. This creates where all of the holes are. Hit generate. When we go out of this here, we can see all of our files, place them into a zip, call that whatever you want. So alarm clock. And that's our file now ready to go to the manufacturer. JLC PCB is a manufacturing company in China which can make our boards very cheaply. I'm not affiliated in any way of them, but as far as I'm concerned, they are cheap and quick and I would definitely recommend them. So I'm going to load up JLC PCB here and go to order now. Add that Gerber file that we just made. So alarm clock and that will now load it in. Once it's loaded your Gerber file, it will automatically update the dimensions and you can have a look just to make sure everything looks as you expect it to. You can choose the PCB quantity. You've got a minimum of five. And if you really fancy making 80,000, you can do that as well. Finally, we can choose a color. I don't believe it costs any more to do the color. So long as you keep the other settings exactly the same, we're gonna choose black in this instance and then everything else we can leave as is. If you wanted JLC PCB to do the surface mount components for you, they can do that, but they can only do it on a green PCB. In this instance, I'm gonna do them myself using a hot air gun. If you don't have a hot air gun, I would recommend just using through hole components if you can. You can do these with a soldering iron, but it is very painful and I wouldn't recommend it. So once we've finished and we're happy with it, just check. You can look on their Gerber viewer and zoom in and out and make sure everything looks A-OK. -okay. And as you can see, it's only five pound for the five boards and around four pound for shipping. So not too bad at all. Hit save to cart, and then we can go ahead and order these things in. That's all there is to it. Now you just gotta wait for it to arrive, throw it all together and enjoy whatever you've just made. So I'm going to do a video on how to upload code to a custom PC. Can I help you? I'm uh, trying to make a video here at the moment. Ah, uh, yeah, if you wake me up with that thing again, um, you're fired. Yeah, I hear that. Is there, um, is there anything else you want to say to everyone, you know, whilst you're here? Yeah. Please like, comment and subscribe. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> 
Yeah, you should do that.